Hey guys, Johnny from Ignite here. Welcome to another video. We're gonna crack into a video on the Tempest and Hagseed, which is that textual conversation module A study. If you're doing that for the HSC, this will be super helpful for you. If not, if you're doing another study of two texts, then please do, I kinda did three there, but two texts. Please do take into account the principles I'm talking about, especially in relation to today's topic, which is context. how important it is when we look at contextually disparate texts, meaning texts that have emerged, in this case, 400 years apart. That's going to have some repercussions when we talk about the way in which a text is communicated. We have Atwood in Hagseed trying to revisit the work of Shakespeare, but Shakespeare's work came out of the Jacobian era, where Elizabethan values and Jacobian values were the most pertinent in society. But if we look at Outward, we're in 21st century land. We're in 2016 when she's writing the novel, which is an adaptation of Shakespeare's play. The Elizabethan and Jacobian values, the age of discovery, the Renaissance, those things aren't going on anymore. Now it's a very secular society that doesn't value religious ideals the same way, that doesn't look at good and evil and morality in the same light. We're in a society that is postmodern, that is post-structural, meaning there's no one absolute meaning for anything. Everything's being challenged, all the conventions. It's all about questioning the things that perhaps were just assumed to be correct those 400 years ago. We're in a completely different paradigm, which means way of thinking, very important term. So understand that when we look at these two texts together as a comparative study, when we look at the textual conversation between them, we have to consider why certain values and reflections and representations are different. Atwood's trying to communicate those underlying enduring universal messages from Shakespeare's play, whether that's about vengeance and mercy and imprisonment and about producing a play, about metatheater and metafiction and all of these things that can carry over across time. But what's going to differ between the texts are the ways in which those types of themes, if you like, are going to be communicated. Shakespeare's approaching it from that Elizabethan Jacobian context, whereas with Atwood, she's approaching it from that 21st century contemporary fashion where we're looking at more secular ideals. So let's have a look specifically at a few key things that you can take away from the context of each. So when we're talking about the shifting values, we're looking at Shakespeare's text, which is The Tempest, coming out in 1610-11. We're in the Jacobian era. The Elizabethan era ended right up until 1603. We then have King James of Scotland come in and take the throne. Remember we had Queen Elizabeth just before that who didn't have an heir. King James won, he's now King of England. The Jacobian era very much had those same religious ideals. We have the Renaissance going on, which is all about transformation. It's all about the potential of the individual coming out. And we had figures like Michelangelo who were prominent as a Renaissance figure. And this is all about transforming who you are and reaching into your potential as a human. That's what that movement was between the 14th and 17th century. And then we have the Age of Discovery, which went from the 15th to the early 17th century, which is all about, for your understanding, how Europe was basically going to America and colonizing lots of different places, such as North America. There was actually a trip that went on at the time that Shakespeare was going to write The Tempest, which is where people were on a voyage to America from England and they got stuck in the Bermuda Islands. And he actually refers to Bermuda in the play because he's playing upon that. That is to do with the age of discovery. Think about the setting of The Tempest on an island. This is all about discovering new land and it's also about colonization and how Prospero has treated the native inhabitant, Caliban. So take that all into account and think about how all of these things are reflected in the text, whether it's the setting of the island, whether it's the magic and the, the religious ideals, the supernatural prominence in the play. And we just don't see those things in the same light 
when we look at Atwood. She's in 2016. We're looking at a secular 21st century who don't value religious ideals in the same way. People don't draw morality as much from these rigid religious hierarchies and systems of belief. We're in a postmodern, post-structuralist world where meaning of everything is being challenged. If you want to understand how postmodern structures are playing out within Atwood's novel, think about the unreliable narration. Think about how she frames it from a third-person limited narration perspective. That's important because it's heavily biased towards Felix, who is the protagonist, who is the modern-day embodiment of Prospero, but consider how she favours Felix in this light. Consider how by giving that unreliable narration, we really are forced to question the true motivations, the objective truth of his character, which is really indiscernible. We can never know what the real truth is in that postmodern way of thinking. Post-structuralism is actually a similar concept, but it's far more specific in terms of literary theory. There we are talking about the fact that the meaning from a text is dictated not so much by the author, but by the responder, by the person viewing the text. Margaret Atwood inevitably had to read Shakespeare's play to be able to revisit and recreate it in the Hagseed. She would have studied it deeply. She would have read it many times. She's reading it and interpreting it. And the meaning of that play is coming from her subjective interpretation. She's then taking that subjective interpretation and you know, her certain innovations that she wants to do with the play, putting it into Hagseed, and then we, as the audience of Hagseed, are then interpreting her text. So we're the people who are then going to determine the meaning of Hagseed, not Atwood. And Atwood was the person determining the meaning of Shakespeare's play. And there's this cycle that goes on where the meaning is constantly being negotiated by author and responder, author and responder, all the way back to us. And that's the textual conversation playing out as well. Okay, and lastly, the Hogarth Shakespeare Project, which I've made a separate video on. Hopefully it's out at this time, but check it out if you haven't watched it. Give you a bit of context on that. That is basically the idea that a personal motivation for Atwood or just a contextual motivation to write Hagseed was the fact that she actually got asked to do so. They wanted her to recreate a play of Shakespeare's in order to commemorate him for 400 years since he died. We wanted to pay a tribute to his work, but also recreate them, give new meaning to them. That's the point, give new life to his work. The meaning changes, and therefore, if Hagseed is giving a different perspective on The Tempest than what we may have otherwise given it, then we're now going to view The Tempest differently as well. And there's this constant negotiation of meaning, there is a dialogue going on between those composers, between us, and that is very important in this kind of context. So hopefully you see how the values play out differently. I didn't really go into specific examples here, but think about how Atwood doesn't give the aerial character the same kind of religious characterization. Ariel is not this fairy that's floating around. Rather, it seems that Ariel is actually enmeshed together at times with the character of Miranda, who appears as a delusion of Felix. Miranda is not the daughter that's alive, but rather she's the deceased daughter who only lives through his memory. And that's an important thing. We don't have that supernatural presence that's present here, and that's clearly because of the contextual change. So Atwood is modernizing these Elizabethan ideals, and she's making them more accessible to a modern day audience, and that's key. She's trying to make these things far more accessible by changing the values that underpin the narrative but she's also innovating the narrative itself. All right, guys, I hope that helps. There was a fair bit of content all over the place there, but hopefully you can get a few examples yourself as well about how these things have been reflected. But please like and subscribe if you got something out of the video. Comment if you've got any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching once again. If you are enjoying our content and we hope you are, please do like and subscribe to our channel. And of course, share with your friends. That's right guys, thanks for watching. But please do make sure you check out our very special resources. They're quite unique. We've made a whole bunch of state rank practical guides for all you English texts out there. 
So check out the link now at ignitehsc.com.au. Let us know what you think. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.